Hi, this is Larry Janeski from Dr. Energy Saver. We're here today at a commercial building and we're going to be spraying foam roofing on the roof. Why would we want to put spray foam on a roof? Because spray foam roofing is one of the greatest developments in the insulation and roofing industry. Applying spray foam roofing is an art. It's done in multiple passes, multiple coats, and after just 90 seconds, you can walk on it. It's hard. This foam is three pounds per cubic foot density compared to spray foam that would be used for insulation inside a building, which would be two pounds per cubic foot density for closed cell foam, or just half pound per cubic foot density for open cell foam. Spray foam roofing is monolithic and seamless. All the way across the roof, the gutters, the parapets, everything, there is no joints to leak at all. It also adds insulation value to the roof, making the building more energy efficient. Now most of our applications for spray foam roofing are flat asphalt roofs or rubber roofs. In this case, we're dealing with a steel roof. And this uh, building owner has struggled with leaks in this roof for a long time. Uh, these uh, seams in the uh, roof have been patched uh, over and over and still water backs up underneath and gets into the building causing big trouble for the tenants and ceilings falling in and drywall damage and mold and property damage and so forth. And uh, so it's just very frustrating. We're gonna solve that once and for all today. By putting spray foam seamless on top of the roof, we are uh, not only making a monolithic water barrier, but we're also putting the insulation on top of the roof so that there's less thermal expansion and contraction throughout the course of the day and the year because the metal roofing is underneath the insulation. Now what we can see here is that uh, the maintenance people have patched this roof in an attempt to uh, so solve the leakage, but we can see a crack in the patch. Now what does that tell us? That tells us that there is significant expansion and contraction of these metal panels. This metal panel is 30 feet long and you can go from uh, 140 degrees down to uh, zero degrees throughout the course of a year and even have uh, temperature swings of 80 or 90 degrees just within 24 hours within one day and we get this uh, expansion and contraction and that puts a lot of stress um, on the uh, bolts that hold the, the uh, roofing down and uh, causes leaks. Here we have a parapet wall and a gutter at the bottom of the roof and this is problematic because when the gutter uh, clogs up, if uh, there's trees here and uh, the property owner has told us that uh, if he's really not on top of this uh, in the fall, that uh, this gutter can get clogged with leaves. But um, you also have ice and snow and slush that uh, backs up a gutter. And when that happens, the water fills up the gutter and it comes right underneath this uh, metal roofing and floods the inside of the building. And we're going to fix that by making a seamless trough with no joints whatsoever at the bottom of the roof so this never happens again. There's many junctions in a roof where the flat part of the roof meets a parapet wall or a skylight or an HVAC platform or a pipe penetration and here's an example of a parapet wall and we have flashing here and these can also be areas where uh, leaks happen um, and spray foam will make a, a seamless transition between the parapet wall and the roof, so all those problems go away. Here we see a qualified roofer had put a rubber patch at the seam of this metal roof, and this just indicates an ongoing struggle against leaks. And we see that the uh, bolts have come through the rubber, and the uh, rubber uh, sealant is uh, worn and uh, separated, and uh, holes in the rubber so we have uh, you know a patch that has failed and very difficult the roof is a hostile environment and uh, a seamless uh, roof that has the insulation on top to avoid all the thermal expansion and contraction underneath it is the answer here we are in a room uh, inside the building and this is where the gutter has overflowed uh, once a year so there you can see the bottom of the metal gutter and you see the insulation that's hanging down and between them there is uh, the end of the roofing panels where the water can get right up underneath it and as much as you try to seal it and so forth you can get never get that water tight 
and uh, that's where this building is vulnerable. Here we are in the lobby of this building, and again, the roof leaks have just uh, caused havoc with the ceiling, and obviously the building's not presentable. Roof leaks cause property owners damage each year into the billions and billions of dollars, and you can see that this space, uh, which is part of uh, a 25,000 square foot building, is unleasable and therefore you can't get a tenant for the entire building. Another issue addressed by spray foam roofing is the reduction of heating and cooling costs. If we look here in a typical commercial building, we have uh, metal girders and metal purlins going across the girders. The insulation is only uh, approximately two and a half inches uh, thick and it's draped across the purlins before the metal roofing is screwed down to the purlins. And so this insulation has very little R value and it has no R value where it's pinced down to nothing between the metal roofing and the purlin. So we have very little insulation in the roof and as you know, heat rises and the roof is the place where we want to have the most insulation to prevent heat from escaping. We don't want to heat the roof and have our heat lost to the outside by conduction. And further, when that sun is beating down mercilessly on a summer day onto that roof, we don't wanna heat this building and then have to spend money and electricity for our air conditioning to work and work to try to take that excess heat away. So, uh, one thing we could do is spray foam the, the bottom of the roof deck inside the building to get some additional R value, but then, we're spraying inside of a building and there's overspray, there's, it could be uh, somewhat messy and so forth. Uh, we also have to add a uh, fire barrier coating to the surface of that foam to meet code. We can't have exposed foam in areas that are occupied uh, or areas that are used for storage inside of a building. So it's two, uh, a two-step process that we need to go through. Uh, if we were gonna spray on the inside. And then still, we only have insulation, we don't have a watertight roof. So by putting this foam on the top of the roof at a higher density, spray foam roofing, we can get uh, a new roof, we can get 20 or 30 more years of life uh, in a leak-free roof and have our insulation on top with no thermal uh, breaks in the insulation and uh, greater performance uh, in energy efficiency for that building. Once the seamless layer of spray foam is applied to the roof to the desired thickness, then two coats of silicone are applied over the foam to protect the foam from UV degradation. The first coat is a dark color and the finished coat is white. This silicone can be reapplied every 15 years or so to get really unlimited life out of your insulated spray foam roof. The roof of this building is now completely transformed with an R value of 13.8 with two inches of spray foam insulation and complete monolithic coverage for a watertight roof for years and years and years. Spray foam roofing is the roofing of the future.